me if you feel that in my energy it's just that i really need to record something because this is going to be one of my very my one of my last recordings i don't know if i'm gonna take a six months break or a year's break i do not know but i'm looking to definitely take a break after um these couple of videos that i'm gonna be uploading welcome back to my channel now if this footage i'm so down i'm so down <clears throat> but if this footage is good then it's definitely going to go up if it's bad then i literally just had a whole probably 30 minutes or whatever talking to myself which is probably going to be very therapeutic because i need that i need that i i just need to talk i just need to talk man anyways a healer with a channel energy healer get the person young gifted and black that's who i am and if you're new to my channel welcome i'd love for you to subscribe also if you for both new and old people listen i have a lot of um content based on the body the mind you know the mi mind body spirit i have a lot of content based on that and i do get a lot of questions from you guys which um basically if you did go through all of my um content you you really wouldn't need to on to ask me those questions if you had gone through my content um, content where we look at the bible of you know what was being said in the word and how that connects to you as a gifted person and what the word is asking of you as a gifted person um, but the thing is y'all do not look at that y'all seem to be more worried of about the um self initiate conversation i mean a lot of a lot of us know we are self initiates a lot of us know um what's happening in our in our lives a lot of us know that there's a, a myriad of things that we cannot share we cannot talk about there's a myriad of personal experiences that can never possibly go into the internet unless and especially not like this i mean you know they can go in a form i would say oh gibala i can blog about his tomb i will see in his tomb you know and then you can get that but how i'm imparting stuff with all that is and all that goes on there's only so much i can say like this before you ask me any questions just go through my channel just go through it you'll find something i promise you because as i said people ask me questions general questions based on what i have talked about right of course i cannot i'll never tell you what to do i'm not that type of person I'll never tell you would this is the A, B, and C of doing something. Like people ask me very specific questions in relation to them. Like there was a, a comment that I saw where a person asked me good Uvumanjani in Zunza And I've been having discussions with a healer friend of mine about in Zunza and it is such a different topic for even for her in her experience it's a different thing and it comes in a different manner and for the next person it will also be coming it will also come in a different manner <clears throat> so to ask me for a certain or specific spiritual journey is not doing justice to you to yourself 
um but also it's not doing justice to me as well because you'll never know until your guides tell you until you get guidance that is led to you that tells you and you will have confirmation after confirmation after confirmations through dreams through random visions through you know conversations through you know it's your own research yeah but for other things that lead i'm i'm practically a person who decided you know what i'd love to speak when my guide said i should speak i was like i would love to speak you know i would love to do that but as long as my speaking equals to someone else who's listening as long as it, it, it equals to them coming back into the into themselves and then i'm done because let's be honest once you are back into yourself then you 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 don't need me speaking to you anymore because you have returned to self you have returned to being and now you have to figure out that aspect of who you are on your own you know so this is why i mainly agreed with my guides to talk about that because when they taught me i had to be submissive to how clear they were and how patient they were and how willing they were for me to be a student and a listener but also to participate as a student you know a student presents to other students i'll never see myself as more than a student you know um also i do have a, a belief and an understanding that there's always a teacher student relationship going on between me and whatever i choose to partake in so right now there's a teacher student conversation happening um it doesn't also say that i'm a teacher you know um i stand very firm at Tammy. i will do things a certain way and i will never ever ever go beyond that certain way that certain bar that i have set and there is a time and a place for everything so with that being said if you are not getting anything then it's not your time yet it's not your place yet you need to be patient and the thing about this journey is it requires a lot of patience because there's a lot of dark moments there's a lot of blank moments there's a lot of things that play behind the scenes you only get to live the results so what you do whilst everything is going on behind the scenes is also very important and it's also up to you bring me back to um why i made this video um bring me back to my i thought it was going to be um very fair for me to share the level of um, unknownness there is here there's literally so much unknownness that you literally sink into it it's almost like misery you could literally compare it to, to misery you sink in it and for me as a depressed per person i go through like ebbs and flows that put me into a minor depressive episode and i get out of it but as i said there is literally so much unknownness that you sink you sink and you sink to what is potential misery the difference with a real miserable life and a life as a gifted person and a selfish initiate is what happens right 
Now, you are going through certain symptoms that indicate that you are a gifted person. And it's to your cycle, and it's seven times, so see when you self initiate. Um, and you paranise in your dreams. So, what this thing means is that, is that you have a you will have a, a very quiet lifestyle. There'll be no noise to tune down. Your life will be super quiet. You will go to work, yes, you will have other things going on. But it will be super, super quiet. And even if you don't have other things going on, you will have yourself going on. You will have your 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 prayer your daily prayers your daily your daily bible readings you will have your personal developments um you will have your personal challenges you will have you will just literally have so much going on even when it's nothing because it's the type of life that this life comes with um that's basically it so where i come from now again the other reason why i did this why i choose to make this video especially in this way is because there is i did a challenge that i want to talk about and i did mention it um i did mention uh, the challenge in my daily devotional and I had so many bizarre moments in the in the challenge and I had bizarre realizations. It was a 60 day challenge. So what I do um, towards the end of the year is that I have I always have something that I do like for a long for a long period of time that is a challenge to myself. Um, before December um, and even before like mid-November because November from mid-November going into December that's festive period and my take on my life is that I, 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 I soften the blow on myself on things that I go through and the things that happen to myself so I sort of spoil myself but like I soften the blow because I, I've experienced so many hard blows in life that really if there's no need for me to put pressure on myself and to put pressure on life and all of that i do not because life has put pressure on me you know so i soften the, the blow and i do this every year but i do challenges and this challenge that i did as i mentioned i called it the 60 day self challenge so what i did for the self is basically a self-development thing because as i said with these with this life you get such darkness and i mean darkness like um you can't see what's happening nobody can see but you have an inner knowing because the inner knowing comes from intuition it comes from your dreams but you can't really tell so you're not really sure so that's the darkness that's number one number two the darkness also is in the context of Uguti. um you literally get no help besides like people who have been chosen to come close to you and there's very few people like one or two you can count them literally um you there's no sort of like it's not um it's literally like you're being blackboard asked one by darkness i also mean like you get to go through the deep 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 pains of the emotional body deeper than you you ever thought you would be able to um go into uh pains of the mental body you go deep into the mental body deeper than you ever knew any person can go and the the pain that keeps coming forth mentally physically spiritually emotionally the pain that keeps coming forth 
is enough to put the entire world in hell basically in hell in agony in it's enough to do that and you come up with this pain as an individual person and you go through things that adults will tell you I've never experienced what you are experiencing it's way too much for you you know it's only then that you when you get such perspective it's only then that you realize hi bo you know this life is a lot and i'm not saying people are not having i mean there's world hunger there's that there's wars happening you know there's people who don't know where they'll be sleeping where they'll be peeing where they'll be releasing themselves there's people who don't know where they'll be getting clothes to wait you know there's that and if what i'm saying is that in this life if there's that then we are also like we can be seen as those people those people who live who live in desolation if you want to compare the pain and the everyday sort of unknownness that goes on you can compare it to a person who's desolate and that's my take on the context of the darkness so yeah within that darkness in the in my video the first devotional video i did say that nothing material comes from my challenges um my fasting whatever nothing material comes out of it but a lot of perspective comes out of it a lot of perspective comes out of it and i learned a few things right so here are the things that i learned and that i feel like if i do impart them someone will understand a certain part of their life that is difficult to understand or they that they just don't have any answers to um okay i learned i had a on day one i won't go through all of this but like i had highlights on day one i had back thoughts okay i had back thoughts when i was writing that both um my spirit and my body should be harbored by god so in religion there is this thing that um and well in reality it happens like the the body is always you know in 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 clashing with spirit like there's always something that spirit wants that the body just cannot go towards and um the flesh and i just had a thought that hey what if i pray um what if it's a daily thing a daily prayer a daily um requirement um for me listen it's okay for my body to be harbored by god yes the body is harbored by sin but for sin to give in the body needs to be harbored by god you know it needs to be subdued by god and to a certain extent that will help me i believe um so yeah i decided to pray that you know what the flesh should experience god too and also it was so that i can have a proper relationship to my body because in this um life it's more about also our diets um what we put in our bodies the frequencies of the things we put in our bodies etc 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 and that was the first couple of days and then i have i had a convo with a specific person in my life and they spoke about they spoke about different types of work and this made me realize why after like so i went to university did my in-service training which my in-service most of my in-service training uh, places weren't really that however Towards the end of my in-service training, I got a, uh, I got into one of my dream companies, and I, 
I worked as an environmental education officer. Basically, it's about environmental awareness. It's about um, it's about environmental management, um, environmental research, um, the curriculum and schools, and you know. But I was I've always like since then I worked as a as a person like I worked for the environment, so. I always wondered why like I couldn't I couldn't get any other job um, after that um, I couldn't really not that I couldn't get any other job but like I haven't been able to get out of that sector the environment sector um, tourism industry type of thing I haven't been able to get out of that <clears throat> and education like my 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 industries literally education environment tourism all combined i haven't been able to get out of that because even after i worked as an environmental education i mean as an education assistant and for me i've always like i know people in places you know i know people in different industries and for me it was like how why aren't these people pulling through or asking me to do one two three because i can you know and why aren't they pulling me you know close and give it under their arms you know you know and this specific person of mine we spoke and i had never ever seen seen this con concept in this way um so we spoke about different types of work right and this person told me that literally he literally said there's clean work and then there's dirty work right then he said some work requires you to play dirty and mold yourself into a dirty person to fit in and i was just like wow wow and goes to show how he's been super supportive of me being where i am now um which i'm not going to talk about but yeah he's been super supportive of me actually um doing things required for my soul for my soul for my soul journey for my spirit he doesn't care about you know anything else as long as i'm able to do things that my soul should be doing basically okay there's a pro and con to everything but like as i said um it was such an eye-opener and then i could feel a healing in my way so in my sacral chakra there was definitely healing there was definitely healing in my root chakra and after that day my chakras just started being active they started being very active you know there were so many openings and i was just like wow wow amazing what a conversation can do and then i learned um i learned so i i i wanted to challenge my um and i won't speak about the whole home or the whole family but connecting a kaya the threshold that my finances reach right and let me speak of me and my um immediate roots which is my mom and my dad um they've both been failing to cross certain financial straight uh, thresholds since since till today um, my dad has been very prominent in like he's a teacher they're both teachers but my dad has been very prominent in multiple projects many things he's very skilled um he was even a photographer he was a geographer he lived that he was a mechanic he's a mechanic for more for all his life um enough my dad is talented and skilled enough and smart enough to have been able to start uh, a garage as a mechanic but he never did 
he's also an electrician smart enough to have his own you know consultations home calls have it as a proper business never did um he started learning how to build blocks like those normal blocks or work his even he even built umshini or work my blocks dad gave up his um business plan to someone else nasekai is going to say that person's block business is booming after he received my dad's recipe right um so in my mind i really tend to forget that the my roots they actually do um, there is some sort of financial curse that is very that goes down very long and that i'll probably never understand you know you know when there's those types of curses um so i always fight with myself with this type of aspect in my life and so in day nine i started approaching after being scared of approaching this i started approaching it and i was like you know what i'm doing a challenge anyways what's there to lose okay and then i realized something about fruits okay i realized i mean something about trees so trees are let me take this so there's such a thing as trees right and god ordained trees to be fruitful we as humans believe trees should be fruitful now if you look at yourself and if you look at your financial position and if you look at if you imagine yourself as a tree and you imagine your work <sighs> and if it was a tree how would you see if your work is being fruitful or not and during those around those days i also came across like a number of videos speaking about curses um of which i'm going to insert some of the things i learned and also i came across um bumi ledwaba's an answered prayer um video and also a video where she was talking with her husband um about if you are within your purpose within your calling how are you not being fruitful how are you not how are you struggling because god says this a provision um and that was for me that was a simple um wake up call as to Oguti, okay, I'm not where my purpose is yet. I had to admit that to myself that I'm not fully in my purpose. However, I also had to admit that I was taking, I had to look at my background and I literally didn't know my purpose. I landed in it. Um, I wasn't idealizing this type of life so now that i landed in it now i had to start a new cycle of being born crawling being a toddler you know feeding from the milk you know i had to go i had to understand that as a person who never per, like had this type of tra tra trajectory with life i have to now realize that this is what my life is and i'm still in the very um fragile stage of growth stages of growth and it's super important for me to um to sort of double down and come right and and be um right in my specific purpose right and I came across uh, a couple of verses and also as I said my background so I'm definitely my my parents are also both spiritually gifted but none of them did anything with them so and they're both immensely talented my mom is a writer she's a storyteller just like me my dad okay if you leave the engineering side um if you leave the artisan side 
he is he he's a as i said he had a, a, an immense talent of piecing things together like color um being a videographer photographer so he had an immense talent of that of which i started finding in myself that hey i'm quite i'm getting better at this and the more i tune it the more the better i've become you know the better i understand things when it comes to videos i'm not the best and i'll never be like a professional but like i'm really starting to see what my dad gave me you know as his daughter and i used to be bad you know i used to be bad but i used to i remember and also coming into um why i started um you know vlogging in TMB. you will see uh in my in my channel i have in my videos snippets of my video in TMB. and um it's only recently that i did a full vlog in TMB because even way back then in in high school i used to record in TMB and wish i had a huge platform where i could like edit in edit what i had and just post this beautiful happening this beautiful you know ceremony and how just magnificent the day was although my phones were crap back then and jay it was crap but like how i had good content when it comes to um portraying in cmb and portraying how things happened and from which angle and for me to finally be able to do that with the vlog or something being which i'll insert for me to finally be able to do that i only realized then now that how yeah v i'm just i'm basically two pieces of my mom and my dad it was like my mom my dad and then they created a little um small zanele type of thing my dad's name is monis my my mom's name is Zanel. so they created literally a small Zanel type of thing you know and they both in education i'm in education but in environmental education it always like my career always leads me to um some sort of informal education um going on which is very up to standard because we deal with the with the curriculum we we are always you know working on our toes always researching all of that and my dad my dad is a real geography buffin and i've never been good in geography but like i do find that in my environmental career there's there's definitely a whole lot of geography and it, it's fun it's fun doing geography i did a bit of it in university and i doing it in my career is really fun because i really get to see it like i never understood i never understood it from back then that's why i never did it because i never understood it um in high school from the perspective of textbooks but now that i do it as a work related thing and it, it, it is very easy i don't know if it's because we use the practical environment for that but like it's very i find it very easy and very interesting um yeah so yeah my my sister was a geography buff and also so back to finances um i very much understood that it had to do with them however then i begged the question you know, now that i am pursuing um you know the small in me and the vanilla in me with when it comes to creativity when it comes to storytelling all the gifts that could have given um when it came to them but they never pursued so now that i'm pursuing everything i'm even pursuing spirituality i asked myself where is my portion you know so i came across psalm 1 verse 3 and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper and then i said i pray that my uh, finances heal now if you highlight season here you will realize something i 
came to figure out that the season had not come yet. Just because you are gathering your power, you are gathering your purpose, you are starting to walk in it, doesn't mean that deliverance will come immediately. So it doesn't mean that deliverance will come immediately, right? So, and then I was on this website that shared like the spiritual power of trees. I said, trees have a spiritual power as it is explained in Genesis 2 verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And then the website had the website had these lessons, which these lessons go back to um, curses. What I learned about curses, I'm gonna insert it also here. But it goes back to um, generational curses, like multiple generational curses, and you know that are very deep, that are very deeply rooted. Um, Okay, and then the lessons, the website, so moving away from curses, um, so the one thing that the curses, um, you know, learning about curses showed me is that if we have a sinful nature, if we have a long line of just being sinful, um, could be, you know, a long line of bad mouthing could be a long line of also we should know that being sinful is not following through with your dreams because you may find that they're not only your dreams but they're part of god's dreams for you but then because you think oh my word i just need to i just need to survive you know i just need you start being selfish and that's how you miss the purpose and that can be sinful as well so it says flee from sin and disas disassociate yourself from unbelievers because it kills your fruit and i had a whole prayer um from that also um which just curses um fruitlessness it curses um fruits that are not edible it curses fruit uh, trees that don't produce fruits it curses spirits that come with unfruitfulness that damage fruitfulness you know um basically that's that right um and then there was a day where i completed my like i fully completed my tf journey so in my tf journey i yo uh, uh, guys it's everywhere i don't want to talk about it um but for the past four years i've been doing you know what i'm doing i've been imparting knowledge for my counterpart like my twin for the past four years and that knowledge has been initiating him and you know all other things have been happening so i don't want to talk about that it's everywhere um so i just realized that i had completed teaching him i had completed making sure that he has the mantle he has the light that i left the light for him i had completed that so i was super happy and then with the unanswered prayer um video by Bumi, i'm still waiting there are a few concepts that I could contextualize of which they're probably at the end but I'm still waiting for more they're at the end of um, my challenge but I'm still waiting for more honestly I do watch it every now and then and then I had a wonderful Sunday service this one time um the priest was talking about the songs of Sol solomon where um five verse chapter five verse nine where a woman wins looking after her lover people asked what was so special about him they asked also 
what was so special about her for her to be helped and she said oh he is dazzling like he is dazzling child and she that like she basically said you know this guy is dazzling and i never ever remain the same ever each time after having an, an encounter with him hmm for me that that was that verse was so it burnt it burnt because not only do we get such lovers in once in a lifetime type of situation but your encounter with spirit your encounter with god your encounter with your deeper soul your encounter with jesus the holy spirit your encounter with your guides once you realize how much love and light they are you are dazzled you know and it also showed me how the world is as compared to how not being in the world is like people of the world asked her why should we help you what is so special about you and what is so special about him but because she was not of the world she did not have the mentality and could not have had um the same sort of vocab in her mind she would have not had the same pursuits in her mind she basically gave people an out of the world experience just by saying he was dazzling her partner was dazzling and she always had a different encounter with him so And I also learned that at church, this was also a church service, that you can't share the light with darkness. And that seems to be the theme coming into a journey of being a healer. It's, it's an ongoing theme. I even have it in my book. And it's a theme I'm, tr I'm getting to deeply respect and deeply understand that you can't share light with darkness. Like, you'll be hurt now. And you, you will want to wallow in your hurt but instead of you, you you get to have time for that but you cannot wake up tomorrow or go to sleep today and say you know what i was hurt and because i was hurt i'm i'm just not going to let it go um and then continue to meditate and pray to a loving god asking for love asking for light asking for you know that beauty that serenity and wanting to feel serene and all of that breath taking all of that it can't happen if you are still holding on to that hurt that's literally the darkness the serenity and sereneness you are looking for the ecstasy it will it will not come or you will not realize it fully you will crave it but because there's our body there that's darkness and you're holding him you won't be able to fully realize so the craving will go deeper and the pastor went even as far as saying worship is not ignorance that is why there is a song worship is not ignorance it is possible you know and it has to happen and yes so as we go on and on and on i found so many revelations about like the situations because i'm i'm very i'm not moody but like i'm very non-existent like i could sit like this and say nothing and do nothing for hours on end and that causes a major depression you know and i finally spoke out about it because i was seeing some patterns that was revealing and out of those patterns i was seeing something 
and I realized and I spoke to a friend, he left friend of mine with his gorgeous arms in Mimoya, which is not shockers. I realized that they were also messed up as much as they were healing and becoming highly active. I was seeing and also experiencing the messed up parts and to which my friend gave me real good real advice um about that and i took it and i started there's a core cleansing regime that i went into i started that which also helped it opened up a lot of doors and a lot of questions that i ever since being a healer i had not had answers to and it made me appreciate being a self-initiate um because had i not gone through the self journey i would have never ever found those blockages i would have never ever found those answers i, I think every aha moment after that it shows me why i'm really a self-initiate because everyone else would have missed the deeper things that were going on especially as in me as unsamu but also they're not my cause and they're not my responsibility they were irrespons they were a responsibility of everyone who came before me they were a responsibility of unsamu and gaufit coming away so i got deeper insights into that and it's just this is the type of thing that cannot be healed by a person such as such as thing i do one two three out of their own will because it, that is not the answer you know um yes in class may be the answer to many people um being a religious prophet may be the answer to many people but like in my case it was never going to be the answer um because that would have meant i was that i was being diagnosed in a very in the very same way that someone else was being di diagnosed and the the issues that prevailed that showed up that were part of my programming they were part of my system they needed me to tap into the dna energetically they needed me to tap into you know um they needed me to tap into the, the the dna codes to break the dna codes to show the dna codes and nobody can nobody can break a family's dna codes nobody can break anyone's dna codes besides themselves you know so it is it has a huge um epigenetic sort of um approach to it um as well so as i said basically no one healer makes you go through you know an epigenetics initiation for example that is your personal journey so you may find that the huge parts of your journey need epigenetics for example and nobody will tell you that you know so yeah that was a huge for me that was a huge step it was a huge step it was a ginomic ginomous step um oh and there were times where i had really bad hallucinations really 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 bad hallucinations I don't know how I got out of that, but I had to sit with myself and tell myself, I am hallucinating. Get out of it. Run. Yo. I kid you not. Bad hallucinations. But then, I missed all of that. Um, my other healer friend of mine had a positive dream about me, so... It was a very beautiful dream so i started realizing that these other side confirmations are affirming me so i need to stay in my position 
and also, also another gifted person like an, another gifted friend of mine called me she had a really positive dream about me and i was like okay i'm gonna continue being put in this position that i'm in because i'm not doing bad i'm not doing anything wrong you know i'm being affirmed in a positive way god has given me a go ahead so i'm still going to you know continue um so after the 30 days the next 30 days now because i had learned about curses i had learned i i listened to what the spirit was saying about curses and i needed to listen more and it seems like another journey of a lifetime so i dedicated the next 30 days into the theme passing from curse to blessings because at church the pastor said listen we are not meant to enjoy we are meant to enjoy and we are meant to pass from we are meant to pass from glory to glory or from blessings to glory each time blessings to glory all the time that's how you know it goes and i was like well damn you are onto something there so let me ask god to forgive me to forgive everything about me and to forgive everyone that came before me let me ask god and tell god that i'm willing to pass from blessings to glory all the time and i mean all the time and that is what i did and i came across after that um a sermon of sarah jakes she was speaking about an open heart now in spirituality we say um open heart chakra or you know but it's something that i had never observed in a religious point of view it made me feel a certain way about how i was on the right path with when it came to viewing god and when it came to viewing the opening of the heart area and what that was truly in spirituality and sarah jakes was definitely onto something there okay and then my heart chakra literally started purging after that and then after that how i started a youtube channel which is literally based on um being able to sleep or being able to have a good day it's it's one of those it's one of your um get a good night's sleep with these rain sounds type of channel and yeah i'll insert it here and yeah okay so as i said the lessons to curses um i mean the generational curses videos gave me perspective the perspective that these videos gave me is fleeing from the tank of judgment which i noted down as step one to healing generational curses in my life and boy is that not hard is that not hard fleeing the tank of judgment it is super hard like i i do notice how i'm very less engaging when it comes to like back and forth engaging i'm very i'm less engaging i i allow the person to speak and i allow myself to respond and if i can't respond now or in a better way i don't i tend to not say anything which is weird but the weirdest thing is i'm so glued to like entertainment um entertainment um stuff on youtube like news and gossip and whatnot and as much as i don't know half of the people or i can never do half of any like i can never do anything about it but me being glued into those just shows me how difficult it is to flee the eye of judgment even because with the tongue like the general trajectory of my life is that 
I've become judgmental, less, less judgmental over the years. I, I've, been, I've truly become less judgmental. However, I still participate in judgment, of which I'm really trying super hard to let go. Okay, uh, I noted that as step one to flee some of the major curses um, in my bloodline. Step two was to love God, going back to Sarah Jake's video. And the heart should be reserved for God. That That is what I wrote. And at church, the next Sunday, they said that. They said all of the heart should go to God. And that is going back to spirituality. That is what spirituality preaches. An open heart, but open to all of God. You guys, I hope somebody out there. Yes, And then number three. Step three was to have a pure heart. It, it, it all goes back now you see what I was saying um, a couple of minutes uh, a couple of minutes ago okay and I did say these will take work and prayer definitely 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 and then the following days I fought literal darkness literal demons and literal dark energies so and then I got out of that and then maybe one day i'll speak on the gift of fire so i'm a twin flame and i have a gift of fire and i am an initiate of the flame of which that is equivalent to the gift of fire um and it's spoken of um in south african spirituality but I understood it as the initiate of the initiate of the flame. So I've spoken about the gift of fire in a way, but I've spoken about it in the perspective of being a twin flame. And so how does one know, just a brief, how does one know they have a gift of fire? Basically your words, your words, um, your words are anointed, so to say, and they create, um, an inner change like it's a visible inner change they move energy like I know my words they move a person's literally I'll, I'll make an example so my example is um, now I'm distracted ah okay anyways being an initiator of the flame so I'm, I'll make an example now I can say and if you've read my book um, you know what I mean, but like my words if I say certain words they have fire in them and then the fire literally <coughs> Mosquito, ew, it was not that So my words certain words have fire in them and If I say something specific They will be literal healing and you will feel it It, it, it causes a very physical um, energetical movement within the body um, also that is why I'm able to do distance Reiki healing that is why I'm able to do distance um, light language healing um, that is why I'm able to heal like I can heal via the phone um, I can heal remotely so that is the gift of the fire I mean the gift of the flame um, um, which is spoken about but as I said I I don't know if I'm gonna speak about this one day um, if you are interested I'm gonna put it back in my profile if you're interested in the initiates of the flame so that you can get a perspective of it I'm gonna put it back in my status highlights on my the energy healer accounts on Instagram okay. um, and then i was plain honest right um going down like i was i became plain honest with how writing down stresses me so i used to journal as a kid so why i stopped was because it literally stressed the hell out of me because i was i, w I would look yo i used to write in primary like I would look at my right and my work like whilst I was writing I would start crying and I never really healed 
and then i'll eventually complete my my piece and then i'd come back weeks later and i wouldn't even get to like you know the fifth sentence without crying i would cry hysterically um so that is why i never journaled um i've never really been into journaling um but then with this challenge i actually met that demon again because it was painful to go back and look at my challenge and and look at how it was set up and, and how things played out basically so after this challenge i started writing again but then in a journaling format but then i was like nah i'm i'm done with this but like after that i actually focused on mantras and gratitude and just um affirming my my life my day and how i saw things basically i i i still choose not to journal i still can't journal um there's a very dark thing about journaling with me and i've forgiven that i've admitted that i there's nothing else i can do about it so i'll leave it at that and then i realized that like on the last couple of days of, of my my challenge i had a revelation of what's my armor pack and make a cool that is why i have like i have like weird pain to the chest it's not really like muscle but like it's in the you know by upape by the rib and i had a revelation after doing research and having conversations and observations that that's why um so i had feedback on on the on the 55th day i had feedback on what had changed since starting and i have a waist issue i'm going to talk about that um some other time but i know i know i know i have i had i have a waist issue yeah um since there was some chakra healing during the challenge and also those were the same days where i started wearing waist beads that my guides told me to wear um my heat like my waist healing was up and down up and down it wasn't entirely bad and then i have a leg issue as well and but like it, it was it was it was starting to not be bad you know um i could say i'm i'm in pain but like highly functional pain uh the other thing is i don't want to talk too much anymore as i said in the beginning of the video um so my content is part but also weirdly enough i have so much um i have so much of devotions and bible sharing to do but like you or i'm not yet watching all my bible sharing which i'm also going to insert even in the descri description box of which i love for you to if you actually need a sermon or whatever i'm i'm also part of the gang you know uh I read my book again it's very it's a very helpful book these are still like reflections of um of what of what was changed out of the things i wanted to deal with and i wrote i was becoming closer to my body and i wished to be more closer to it and i cultivated a new era of life with god with god um and then there are some cries that i felt like were heard and that's when I started doing forgiveness meditation, which was hard. Forgiveness meditations, hard, hard as hell. And they take a huge toll on your body. Um, and then I also realized a few, a couple of other things. 
and then which I wanted to be better at. So the end of the totality of the program was I realized that I was so mad. I was so mad at some like for the longest time um, that being a healer was not my bread and butter. Um, of which my guys had said it was supposed to be my bread and butter and not just being a healer but like being uh being a speaker being i feel like i'm a i'm a i'm a revelationist i you you get something as an individual and then when you come to me it's like oh okay so i'm not entirely crazy type of thing so you ex your your vision gets expanded in a way I'm able to deliver huge sort of information and break it down into tiny pieces and expand on it. And that information practically comes from Umoy. So me being that person, I felt like I wasn't getting enough bread and butter through that. And the final day when I was reflecting, I actually realized I was getting some not an ideal amount but i was definitely getting a lot than i could have ever thought so i started being grateful for that um and i was after that i was still um very much deep into purging resistant energy like that is what i took to um and then I made it a thing to continue with my forgiveness invitation and last but not least I'm slowly building a relationship with that and I can't explain what I found it's not an inner child it's not my inner child it's not the flame it's not but I found something after this challenge and it's been very challenging to build it. I want to figure it out. I want to find out more of what it is. But I'm definitely building a relationship with that. Anyways, this was longer than I had expected. But that is who I am after the challenge and i hope with anyone who is watching i hope you are able to take on something and you are able to build from that um or help yourself build from whatever you started your foundation with i hope and forgive the people who are talking outside but i hope i came with some sort of light um and do forgive me for not bringing the daily devotionals um as i said i do feel too overwhelmed with sharing who i am like like it's not really sharing who i am but like it's a very per it's devotionals are like reading a bible doing your own bible study and listening to what umoya is saying and having like that divine new breath of fresh air being breathed into you and for me i'm still unable to record that moment right um but there are sermons that i have there are like if you don't want to call them sermons but like there are like um lessons from the bible that i that, that i do have here on my channel that you can watch um, but yeah, I'm sorry for not being able to bring through my daily devotionals. I do have footage and I do try, shame, to bring everything together, but it's super hard. And because in other days, like, I can't record, like, I, I haven't recorded so a, a lot of the devotionals that I did on my own. I haven't recorded, um, because as I said, it's very difficult to record. And maybe if I do get the courage one day, maybe next year, I will post those recordings. But for now, it I 
I don't have the courage and I don't have the courage to continue videotaping myself during the devotionals because they have to have a sequence to them and that would require me to continue recording but as I said it's very hard I can't um so what's next right now in my life is I'm basically playing the weight game um but there's a huge and um, there's a lot of stuff in store but I'm still playing the weight game as I said I have humongous anxiety and I am trying to go back since I moved cities I haven't been to my psychologist and I'm I'm trying to get back to going there and doing other for, uh, other and seeing other people for healing I found other people for healing like holistically purposes um they are also very western so like it's, it's going to be like a mix i'm looking for that for my life right now because i have crippling anxiety um i'm struggling with breathing with a whole lot of things that i'm struggling with um what else yeah but as i said i'm tired of um you know oh this life it's just you keep fixing yourself but then when you keep fixing yourself you keep you keep finding more things more things and that is what my life is dedicated to literally uh, if there's anything that happens it's it's that literally and nothing else um so i don't know i also wanted to say please a lot of a lot of self initiates know but I love that you a, a majority of you are quiet and I love that there's there doesn't have to be more of Olongile Dimba it doesn't have to be more people talking about stuff I love that we are staying under the radar I love that we are staying into ourselves we need to do more of that um, you don't have to be an imparter of knowledge. You can be if you are asked to by your guides, but it's very few of us who will be asked of that. I'm proud of literally who you guys are and the people I have met as self initiates. I'm proud of the craft that you are owning. Many of you are doing your own thing, owning your own craft without revealing who you are there's no need to let all these other people reveal themselves and go wild and go back there's so many wild things out there let it happen but don't get into the fashion of talking we don't need to know life about each other we don't need to know about each other we need to know less about each other um yeah it, it's it's literally that and i do want to further expand on what i said in the beginning of the video looking at it you know i wanna so this video will have another part although it's a separate part but like it, it will have another part where i'm actually encouraging those blank moments, those um, dark moments, the 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 laid back life, the life behind the curtain, the quiet life, the hermit life, um, of which religious religious people call it a moment of solitude, but we say it's hermiting, you know. Um, and a lot of us, the more we discover ourselves, the more we go into hermits. And believe me, you that is where you need to be it is okay we have a lot of mental breakdowns in there we have a lot of emotional meltdowns you are not alone you are not alone but i have a very fun way of showing that this is the life that was required it was asked of us it was ordained 
and it's very much anointed it feels like a curse but it's not if you get a specific perspective on it and i'm gonna be talking about that probably in my next video or probably my last video or probably next year but yeah and that will be it i think um until you see me again some other time but thank you so much for all your support your tuning in your listening and thank you so much for um your humbleness basically take care bye and happy festive yay